Hi, my name's John and welcome to the John D. Jones YouTube channel. In today's episode, I'm going to give you an introduction to EpiServer Commerce. I'm going to quickly go over what it is, some of the benefits of using it compared to building something custom yourself, and then I'm going to give you, more importantly, some of the hidden gotchas, some of the things that you should consider when you're planning your EpiServer Commerce project. These are the things which will bite you in the ass if you don't know about them. All right, so EpiServer Commerce is an ep uh, as the name implies, comes from EpiServer. It's an add-on to the CMS, which means you have to pay the cash money if you want to buy it. It's a bit annoying, but obviously, because it integrates with the CMS so well, you get like one interface where you can log in and manage your content, your PIM. Um, there's, it integrates with EpiServer Find, so if you're using that, you have an easy way to search your products on your website. You can do stuff like faceted filtering searches and stuff like that really simply. Um, it also comes with a number of th third-party integrations, so it integrates with stuff like um, payment providers like PayPal, there's um, PIM support so it connects to things like InRiver. So pretty much out of the box you're going to get a lot of benefits which you just couldn't get doing it yourself. Commerce is used by you know hundreds of websites so it's tried and tested. So it's definitely um, a good option um, if you want to build an e-commerce solution with EpiServer. Now, a bit of history about commerce for those who care about it. Uh, originally, it was developed by a company called MediaChase, which is an American company. I think, you know, a few years ago, EpiServer bought it. And then since then, they've been doing a lot to upgrade the um, product, to integrate it a bit more nicely with EpiServer and to make it work a bit nicer. Now, this is sort of where one of the uh, pain problems with commerce can come in for developers using it. Because it was done by MediaChase, and I don't think they understood what a solid principle or what test-driven development was, a lot of the old commerce APIs, they're not very easy to test, and they're a bit clunky. Everything you know doesn't have an interface on it, or it's using abstract base classes, that sort of stuff. So if you're trying to build an EpiServer project, and you're like me, you're more test-driven, and you want to write unit tests, trust me when I say this, is you need to give yourself a lot more time in order to write your tests and do you um, make everything testable. Now it's a bit of a pain, I admit, um, EpiServer definitely are working on it, all the new stuff that they've been writing in the last few years, all of that's testable, but all the old media chase stuff, which is like the legacy stuff, you know, that's still being in the process of, you know, being polished and upgraded. So for example, uh, a project I worked on about two years ago, it took us a good couple of weeks just to write all the wrappers and all that sort of good stuff, just to make it, um, just so we could write some basic tests around the basket and stuff like that. So just be that, uh, keep that in mind that if you want to create a testable website, give it a little bit more time. Now obviously, when we're talking e-commerce, things are always going to be difficult. I've built a number of e-commerce websites over the years, and one thing I can say is, sorry, ambulance, um, no two things are ever the same. So, like most businesses, you know, e-commerce websites, they start off small little websites with, you know, some crappy little database that someone's built, and then as more customers come through, these databases evolve. You know, I've worked in uh, some companies where the customer table or the order tables, you know, it's millions and millions of rows, and if you lock the table, the whole system, like, blows up. If this is sounding familiar to you, I mean, it's just one of those things is, as soon as you need to integrate that into a third party product, you're going to have issues no matter what. So this is probably one of uh, another bit of my advice, is that when it comes to planning or doing any of that sort of good stuff, always make sure you give yourself plenty of time. I mean, when it comes to a commerce project, it's definitely better to over-exaggerate. Um, your time scales because I think most developers think they're rock stars and they can do things you know really quickly. I think it's really easy to underestimate because you forget things like you know splint planning, um, people going on holiday, all that sort of stuff. So when you're working with commerce, definitely overquote for everything because trust me, you're going to hit into some bumps. And if you don't have that extra leeway, all you're going to do is shoot yourself in the foot. Personally, I always like to overquote on things and then look like a champ when I under deliver. If you want to uh, underquote. Tell your boss you're going to do it by December and then January comes, it hasn't been done. You're the guy who's going to look like a bit of a douche. So, this is another experience or a little bit of tip. When it comes to EpiServer Commerce, there's a lot of hidden gotchas, there's a lot of like hidden things that you should know. 
I can't obviously cover all of that in this video, but the other advice I'd say is if possible, try and get a contract or try and hire someone or pay EpiServer just to come in and then be able to give you some advice if that's one day a week or if that's full time because from experience it's really easy to come up with a product or come up with a solution to an issue. You go down a certain route and then you find in you know six months time that was a really bad idea and you have to rewrite stuff. Um, one good example of that is back in the old days, Commerce used to use some of the uh, Microsoft workflow stuff. Um, it was such a pain in the ass to like write anything to. It took you know companies like months just to be able to do some basic workflow and sort of promotions on their baskets. Luckily, that's all being replaced. But just you know not knowing about that knowledge and not knowing how that workflow stuff just cost people and it ended up taking loads of time. Um, so obviously, if you want to do a commerce build, it's possible to do it all from scratch, but it will um, take you a lot longer, I think. From all the experiences that I've worked with and all the platforms, I think integrating into episode with commerce is quite nice, but stuff like uh, importing stuff into your, into your PIM, that's always going to take a lot of time. If you have to write any stuff like a custom payment provider, make sure that you've um, taken a lot of time for that. Again, if you've got some weird things around pricing or markets, um, out of the box there's some good APIs to deal with it. But if you have some really crazy requirements like I've had previously, you really want to give yourself enough time. Um, some of the things and some of the projects, we've actually needed some features and we've actually been blocked until they've come into the main product. Um, there's definitely one case where we wanted to do a, fast, a faceted filter on some of the commerce objects and in the end EpiServer had to build something within to the uh, find, I think, product. So obviously that needs to get released before we can release that website. So I don't want to make it all sound doom and gloom. I mean every single project I've um, worked on, we've got it delivered, it's out there. Some of the projects I've worked on have been really high intensity um, traffic. So on, on a sale day you can have thousands of like, people visiting the website. So it, um, it definitely lives up. That's another thing you should definitely consider if you're new to e-commerce is how you're going to cache your pages. Obviously if you've got things like um, changing prices on a very constant basis, you don't want to just have no caching on your website. So some of the things you might need to consider is should you have your prices coming from Ajax? Do you want to look into like stuff like donut caching? All stuff like that. Well I'm hoping this video has been beneficial. I know it's a, a very brief sort of video and I can't really go into the ins and outs of everything because I'll be here forever. You'll be bored, I'll be bored, we'll all be falling asleep. Um, instead we'll probably all be down the pub having a few pints. If you've liked this, you want to learn a bit more about EpiServer, EpiServer Commerce, you want some of my golden wisdom, then obviously click the subscribe button, become a champ, become a true legend. If you like this and you want to help other people, please hit the like button because that's the thing which um, might help someone else find this video. If not and you need some uh, EpiServer Commerce help, I'm always available for a fee or you can go to my website. There's about 800 tutorials.